Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us talk about the other components of the eye. So the next component is cornea which is a thin membrane through which light enters. So it is something like a for example, if you put an opaque curtain on your window, will the light enter inside your house? No. But instead of that, if you put a transparent curtain, what will happen? The light will still be able to enter your eye. So that, so that is the same thing happening here. So the cornea is like a thin membrane through which light can enter inside the eye. So the portion of the eye which is visible from outside, so the, the eye white portion, that is nothing but cornea. So it is the anterior portion of the anterior portion of sclera forms cornea that is the outermost layer. So this outermost layer is sclera. So if you see the front portion of sclera this forms the cornea and this is the portion which is visible from outside. So this is cornea. Aqueous humor. It is the fluid mostly water to maintain the correct pressure balance. So the water like fluid which is present in this space between cornea and the lens that is known as aqueous humor and it helps to maintain the correct pressure balance. So you need some water there so that the right balance can be maintained. And this space where aqueous humor is present is known as aqueous chamber. So basically this is the space between the cornea and the lens. This entire place is aqueous chamber and the fluid is aqueous humor. Next is pupil. It controls the amount of light entering the eye. So if you see it is a small opening here. So through this opening light will enter inside our eye. Now neither too much of light should enter inside the eye nor very less light should enter. So this pupil can increase or decrease its size and that is how uh, the amount of light can be controlled which is entering inside the eye. So pupil plays a very important role. Now the question is how pupil changes its size. Now the Okay, so we'll talk about that. So pupil is a small aperture in front of the lens. So it is like a small hole through which the light enters. So the diameter of the pupil is regulated by iris. Now as I said, this is, let us suppose this is iris. So when the iris is like this, this is the diameter of the pupil. Now if the iris becomes like this, this would be the diameter of the pupil. So basically depending upon the movement of the iris, the diameter of the pupil is decided. So that is how the pupil size is changed and that is how the amount of light can be controlled. So the next one is iris which is a dark muscular diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil. Now the iris is able to move because of its muscular nature. So the muscles can contract and expand and that is how they can move. They can come nearer, they can move apart. So this, these are the iris. So here you can see this portion is the iris So and they are muscular in nature and that is why they can control the size of the pupil. Now one example from our day to day life is sometimes it would have you would have observed that let us suppose you were sitting inside a closed room and suddenly you came out in bright sunlight what tends to happen you would have seen that you tend to actually close your eyes almost why because immediately when there is that much of change in the amount of light then your iris tries its best to reduce the diameter of the pupil as much as possible but if it feels that even after reducing the diameter to the minimum even then the small amount of light which is entering that is also too much in that case you tend to close your eyes so that that light do not enter your eyes so depending upon the situations your iris tend to change the diameter of the pupil and that is how it can control the amount of light which is entering your eye. So iris is an opaque structure which is the visible colored part of the eye as I said. Now if you look at your eye, what are the visible parts that you can see? This is how it looks like from front. Now this white portion which you see that is the cornea. Then you see a visible portion like this and you see a small portion like this. So this small portion at the center which you can see that is actually the pupil and around that whatever you see that is the iris and it is an opaque structure. 
and a colored part of the eye. So for some of them it is brown in color, for some of them it is bluish in color. So it depends uh, what is the color of the iris. So these are the three things which are visible from outside, cornea, pupil and iris. Next is the eye lens. So it is a crystalline transparent lens. Of course, the lens are generally uh, transparent and crystalline. And the adjustment, final adjustment of focal length needed to focus objects at different distances on the retina. Now, the speciality of this lens is that the focal length of the lens is adjusted so that the image is always formed on the retina no matter wherever the object is. So whether the object is near or the object is far, the image has to form on the retina. Now you all know about the concept of image formation. Now the distance of the object from the lens is denoted by U, distance of the image formed is denoted by V and the focal length of the lens is denoted by F. Right? Now these three have a correlation and that is what we talk about in lens formula in physics. Now if the object distance changes, the image distance also changes if the lens has a fixed focal length. But in this case, we want the image distance to be the same. The image should always be formed on the retina. Now the object distance will keep changing because whatever objects we see around us, their distances are definitely going to vary. Some objects are very close, some objects are very far. So now what can you do in order to keep the image distance constant? You have to change the focal length of the lens. So that is what is being done here. The lens of the eye is designed in such a way that its focal length can be adjusted. Now how is the focal length adjusted? The adjustment of the focal length is actually done by the ciliary muscles which are present on both ends of the lens. So these ciliary muscles can actually, so let us suppose if this, this is the lens right and these are the ciliary muscles which are present on both the ends. Now if these muscles tend to contract what will happen the lens can become like this because of these muscles. Similarly, if these muscles leave it loose, the lens can become even like this. So that is how these ciliary muscles which are present on top and bottom of the lens can actually control the focal length of the eye lens. It can actually change the focal length and ensure that every time irrespective of the, uh, of the distance of the object, the image is always formed on the retina. And the image which is formed on the retina is always a real and inverted image. Because for most of the cases, the image formed is always real and inverted with a convex lens. The ligaments attached to the ciliary body holds the lens in place. And also these ciliary muscles, where the ciliary muscles joins to the lens, there are certain ligaments which actually holds the lens in place. Because if the lens start moving, I mean, if it is not fixed at a particular place, in that case, the image formation will not take place properly because your object distance as well as image distance will also start to vary. So the lens has to be present at the correct position. Next is the ciliary muscles. Now, these are responsible for changing the curvature of the lens, which I was discussing just now. And that is how it can change the focal length of the lens. It is formed by the anterior part of sclera. So if you see here also, it is not actually sclera, it is formed by the anterior part of the choroid, that is the middle layer. So if you see this was the middle layer and the front part of the middle layer actually forms the ciliary muscles. Front part of sclera forms cornea. So you can have a look at it from the picture, it will become clear to you. Vitreous human, it is a jelly-like transparent fluid which fills the entire space between retina and the lens. And due to the presence of this fluid, the spherical shape of the eye is retained. Because if you look at the entire structure of eye, most of the space of the eye is filled with this gel-like fluid. So if this fluid is not there, so it, it is almost like a balloon. Let us suppose if you fill the balloon with air or with water, so it retains a particular shape, whether it is oval or spherical or whatever, that particular shape is retained. The moment you take out the air or the water from inside, what happens? That shape is lost. Similarly, in case of eye, if you see 
This spherical shape of the eye is because of this fluid which is present in the vitreous space and this fluid is the vitreous humor. So that is why we can say that this jelly-like fluid actually helps to retain the spherical shape of the eye. The space between the lens and retina is known as the vitreous space and the fluid is the vitreous humor. Next is the optic nerve, so these nerves. Now whatever function the eye does, that is the eye basically helps to form images. Now the images which are formed are real and inverted image. So let us suppose if you, you, if you are looking at a bottle, the image which is actually formed on the retina of your eye is an inverted bottle. So now if you start seeing everything inverted, will you be able to understand what are you seeing? Not always, right? So that inverted image needs to be erected. And how is that done? So now that information or that image which has been formed on the retina, that information is passed on to the brain. And how is it passed on to the brain? Through the neurons. That is through the optic nerves. So these optic nerves send electrical signals to brain. And the image which is formed that is converted into electric impulses. And these electric impulses are passed through the neurons present in the optic nerve and then sent to the brain. Brain and it then reaches the visual perception region of the brain where the image is interpreted. And an erect image is actually uh, sent and an erect image is actually seen by the uh, person and then the person also understands what he is seeing because the interpretation is done by the brain. Then the person gets to know that okay whatever I am seeing is a bottle and the bottle is half filled with water. So that interpretation is actually done by the brain. So it is very very important that there is a strong connection between the sensory organ and the brain and that connection here is provided by the optic nerves. So these are the important components of the eye. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.